So for all of the Volkswagen Group engines, we've been discussing some of the problems that are inherent to them, not to highlight that they're particularly unreliable engines, but just to flag them up so drivers are aware of what they're getting into and they can keep an eye on some of these things. So it's our turn to look at the VR6 engine. There was lots of different engine sizes and lots of different versions of the VR6 engine coming out, but there's a few things that just kept cropping up. So we're gonna flag them up in this video so you can be aware of the problems and avoid them. <laughs> So one of the common things that you often see in articles on the web is a warm at stall issue where the VR6 engine gets hot and it just stalls and cuts out on you. Now, I wouldn't really flag that up as a problem because there was a recall and Volkswagen Group reflashed the ECUs to prevent that from happening again. So it has been a problem in the past. It was certainly quite annoying, but it's a problem that the Volkswagen Group have picked up on and they've addressed. So it should never rear its ugly head again. If your car is stalling when it's hot and it's had that recall done on it, you've probably got another issue that's unrelated to that common fault. And it's not an unusual fault on any engine really. So I will do a video on diagnosing common faults like hot stalls and cold start issues issues at a future date. So the engines use timing chains. Some versions had two chains, some had just the one. Now what happens with the timing chain is it sometimes stretches and that upsets the whole timing in the engine as the cams are now at slightly different durations. And you'll notice rough running, rough idling, and it's intermittent problems. The wear and tear can actually effectively cause it to be misaligned on one of the teeth on the cam gears and that'll upset the whole timing of the engine and you'll have all sorts of problems. So make sure your timing chain is changed and updated at the correct interval. I would actually recommend you get it done a little bit sooner than your Volkswagen Audi Group manual states just to be on the safe side. But if you're starting to notice some sort of rough running or rough problems, make sure that you get the timing chain sorted and replaced before it becomes a major issue or breaks on you causing all sorts of catastrophic engine damage. So another Another issue that kept cropping up was the coolant temperature sensor was starting to play out. And there's something that seems to be quite common in quite a few engines. So what that will typically do is cause the engine to have trouble starting. So it might need to be turned over for a longer period of time. It might take a few attempts to get the engine started. It might start to stutter and splutter when it's actually running. So the engine needs to know how hot it is in order to get all of the timing and fueling correct. If the sensor is giving it wrong information, that's going to upset its calculations and it's going to lead to that poor running. It's quite a simple, cheap part to change. So if you're experiencing problems with the engine stalling, cutting out or having starting issues, it would certainly be a good idea just to get that temperature sensor checked and replaced if it is faulty. Got a little favour to ask, can you just drop us a like and please in the comments let us know what car you've got, what your plans are for it, what mods you've got and what your experiences are. It really helps us to get out there. We're a very small channel so we really appreciate the feedback from our viewers. So as also with a lot of the Volkswagen Group engines, coil pack failure was a problem. So that would cause a misfire on at least one cylinder. So diagnosing that, it's a little tricky. If you've got a VAGCOM and you can plug that into the diagnostic port, it will tell you which cylinder is having the problems. If you swap the coil packs over and the problem moves, you've identified the coil pack that is actually the problem. If the problem stays there and you're still getting a misfire, you've got some other issue going on. So check the spark plugs and check the other components that relate to the way the engine burns fuel. But again, coil pack failure is a problem on earlier engines and most of the modern coil packs don't seem to have this problem so I think you can assume that the owner has sorted out this problem and addressed it and replaced the coil pack so it's not something you need to worry about and interestingly the Volkswagen Audi group on a lot of the later VR6 engines ditched the coil packs altogether and they went back to having an ignition coil driving each of the spark plugs so the water pump had plastic teeth the plastic teeth would often break or it would stop rotating against its metal spindle and that would lead to slow circulation of the coolant so you would get higher temperatures in the engine. You'll get some really funny temperature readings or maybe the temperature would suddenly just jump up. So keep an eye on the water pump. It's probably a good idea to get the water pump changed at the same time you get the cam belt or timing chain done. And there are metal replacements that are much more heavy duty. Um, personally, the plastic ones do last quite a long time. So the metal ones cost significantly more. It certainly makes sense to get that problem addressed if it's just the water pump causing the 
problem, then get it replaced and just check the rest of the coolant system that you've not got cooling issues elsewhere. So head gasket failure was quite a common problem on the VR6 engines. Now, often when the head gaskets are replaced, a lot of people are lazy and they use the old head bolts. And that is a really bad idea, particularly on the VR6 engine. So it's essential you get good quality bolts. Now, a lot of the aftermarket bolts are not actually as good. They are what we call stretch bolts. So as they talk them up, they stretch very, very slightly. And if they're made from inferior materials, they'll continue to stretch and start to deform. And that can actually lead to instances where you can almost rotate them by hand. They're really not holding the head on. So I would avoid a lot of the aftermarket ones, particularly from cheaper manufacturers. There's some good quality versions out there, but um, if you stick to the original equipment manufacturer head bolts each time you change the head and get a slight skim done on it just to make sure and you'll have no problems. How do you know the head gasket has gone and you've got a problem? Well, just removing the oil cap and looking underneath, if you notice a white emulsion a mayonnaise type substance, you've got coolant that's been mixing with the oil and that is a pretty good indicator of head gasket problem. You may also get exhaust gases bubbling through the coolant and if the coolant is very dirty that can also be an indicator of head gasket failure and if it's starting to burn oil and you've got oil seeping into the cylinders that could also possibly indicate a head gasket problem um, but often burning oil is down to some other issue but look out for that white mayonnaise because that's that's the biggie. So on your VR6, if you notice a rattle around about 2000, 2500 RPM, it could very well be down to a problem with the intake runners. Now, in most cases, replacing the intake runner is sufficient to solve the rattle problem. But in some cases, things degrade so badly, you may need to replace the whole of the intake. So keep an ear out for that noise. And if it starts to rattle, get on it quickly because it's the sort of damage that will only deteriorate and get worse over time if ignored. Quite a few owners report oil leaks from various spots around the engine, but generally they're nothing to be concerned about. If they really did bother you, removing parts, redoing the gaskets and resealing everything up is generally enough to deal with those oil leaks. But in the main, it's more hassle, more expensive to get into them and fix them than it is to just live with them. On the early 2006, 2007 versions of the VR6 engine, there was quite a common problem with the oil pump bolt. The metal it was made from wasn't particularly great and it would share off and break causing a lot of problems for the oil pump and consequently for the rest of the engine. So if you've got an early engine it's worth as a matter of routine just checking that that bolt has been replaced and if it hasn't get onto it straight away because it's just a problem that's waiting to happen. The later engines don't have this problem they've changed the parts that they use and use much better quality bolts now so that shouldn't ever rear its ugly head again. And another thing to watch out for is the positive crankcase ventilation diaphragm the PCV sometimes that splits. Now, if you notice a whistling noise from the engine, it might indicate that the PCV has gone. Now, fixing it is quite fiddly. It's not in a very accessible part of the engine and it takes quite a few hours and it's really, really fiddly. Um, but that whistling noise is generally usually down to a PCV issue. And there are some workarounds. So if you've got a dodgy PCV, there's a few things you can do to the engine to just stop that problem from becoming an issue. There's quite a few guides on Online in various forums and on our website if you want more information on that. On the VR6s with the serpentine belt you've got an issue with the tensioner um, so that is generally the pulley that tends to fail and if that serpentine belt does go you've got big problems in the engine. Um, at the very least your water pump and your alternator and the um, oil pump will stop working um, but it can have catastrophic consequences for the engine if it's not caught in time and addressed. Just keep on top of your servicing make sure that you service your VR6 engine and keep it in good condition and you should have very few problems with it. It's a very solid very reliable engine and there's reports of people doing hundreds of thousands of miles on it without any significant problems or repairs required. So thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give us a like and uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned. See you in the next video.